Thomas Murphy Show, and this is a live Hunt Talk edition. Our guest today is Don Lindsay, and he is with the Canadian Firearm Network. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So, I've seen you walk around with this tall stick. It doesn't look like a gun, but it does have a picture on a gun. Yes. It's called the Canadian Firearm Network. It's on Facebook. It's on Facebook. It's on Facebook site. At the Facebook site. So, we're at the Hunt Show at the Thomas Murphy Center for a show. What are you all about? Uh, everything that's pro gun. Um, I've been a lifelong shooter. Uh, I've been firing a handgun since I was seven years old. I've done uh, uh, Wild West type show stuff uh, with my parents and my brother when we were growing up. Uh, my dad is heavy into Civil War reenactments. We have a cannon in the garage, we have muscle loader, uh, muscle pistol swords, we have our uniforms, we have that whole thing. Um, my dad was heavy with the Western type stuff. My brother was into long distance shooting, and, uh, and I was mainly into collecting military type stuff from the World War One all the way up. And so my lifelong sport and hobby. Um, so basically, it's in your DNA. It's basically yeah. I just love guns, and like uh, last year, I spent fifteen hundred dollars on ammunition. Last year, and did not kill a single animal. Uh, That's a lot of shoot. A lot of target shoot. I get my friends to go together. We head up in the middle of the bush somewhere, and we go camping and uh, canoeing. It's like a big base camp and kitchen tent, all that sort of thing. And then, uh, and then we go down into a shooting pit, ride down on our dirt bikes, and then we do what we're blasting off: uh, M14, 308 semi-automatics, uh, CZ 858s, Caltex 7000 9mm carbines, M1 Garands. Um, All black perfectly powder, legal to use everything areas. perfectly legal, non-restricted, everything legit, and we go up there and we blast targets and have fun doing it, and then at the end of the day, no animals have died, and uh, we go back and crack some beers and go canoe and have some fun. Well, me being a hunter, I kind of like the taste of venison, but having said that, I know we used to go up into the public property, the private property where we have permission, and we would get our shotguns out and just go through three or four boxes of clay birds and just move them down. It's a good way to go out there. A lot of people sit around and play video games, and talk about which guns they would, let, they would have if they were, you know, and there'd be this sort of thing and that. But when it comes around to actually getting them out there and actually trying a real gun, they realize it's not as simple as pushing a button on the rear title. It's sort of related to a, a game of golf where you're taking this golf ball, we'll call it a bullet, and you're trying to put it in this hole, however far away. And if you use proper finger control, sight control, and breathing control, then make the shot. If not, you're going to get an extra point again. Oh yeah, there's a real science to uh, firearms. It's really science-based. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just not spray spray like, you know, some of the anti Well, you can do that, but well, unfortunately the government got rid of our, our uh, high-capacity magazines. It got us down to five rounds, and it's kind of... Well, it was a lot more fun, I'd say, when I could have 30 rounds in my 223s or my 760 by 39 going to last a whole bunch of pop bottles. Do you remember those days when I had my assault rifle 223, 35 round mag? I could hit me pretty quick and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. They don't, they don't sell those well, So what I do now was, uh, with this Canadian Fireworms Network is uh, myself and, uh, and another friend, uh, David Brown, we put this uh, site together and we share anything that would interest any uh, people in the firearms community. Uh, we're involved with the Canadian Shooting Sports Association, the National Firearms Association, uh, with those people who, who are fighting hard for pro gun uh, interests. And any of the gun business out there, I just store anything. If it has anything to do with the gun, I throw it up on the site. I just let people know that it's out there. Uh, there's groups out there that are more political groups like. Uh, Carry concealed Canada, pushing for the right to carry handguns in Canada. Uh, while there are some of us that want to, you know, just have them out in the bush. There, I guess there are those that want them on the street. But as far as I'm concerned, I would be happy if I could just take a, a revolver. Out. If I could take a 30 out six in the bush and go and shoot pop cans, why can't I take a 44 Magnum? Because I'm going to be just as responsible with any fire. And, and it shouldn't matter. And, and, uh, you know, so there, there's a lot of different groups that, that, that are pushing for a different political change in that. So I share these interests. But at the same time, all the program uh, businesses I can find, no matter what it is, um, I throw it up. Just let people see it. Well, I believe at one time, like, I don't think I'm wrong, but. So I'm pretty sure this. I know at one time in Canada you could hunt with a handgun. Yes. That, that, and then they changed the laws. Well, you could hunt with a handgun, but you can't carry a handgun. So unless the animals in your backyard, you had to start paying anyways. They sort of got around the hunting aspect. So one time you could hunt with a handgun. I think I've done that down in the states. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> But up here in the Canada, you can. Oh yeah, my dad has a, a, a Ruger Super Blackhawk stainless 44 Magnum with a 10 and a half inch gold barrel on it. That gun there would be perfect 
you know, handgun for, uh, for hunting a deer. Lots of people have gone and hunted uh, with lever action 44 magnets. You know, and you can get a 16 inch or 16 half inch barrel trapper model, which I, I also bought my dad gave me to his birthday one time. So he's got this nice lever action Winchester and 44 and a matching revolver with the 10 and a half inch bow barrel. They'd be a great combo for somebody going out, you know, going out to do some hunting. But the government has made uh, the whole aspect of that sport unique and it's really taken the fun out of it. And to me, sportsmen and sportswomen, they're perfectly safe, they're perfectly normal, they come from all sorts of professions. There's lawyers, there's doctors, there's dentists, there's coal workers, there's farmers. They all hunt and fish, yeah. and yet sometimes we're treated as a Well, the, the, the thing is, is people talk about gun safety and say, you know, you get some of these anti-gun crowds out there, like uh, handgun control, and, and these people, I think, have got their heads a little bit messed up because they're saying, you know, if you have a gun, you're so much more likely to be injured or killed or something in the home. Well, that was the case. And they also say that if you have a gun, you're more likely to commit violence. Well, if that was the truth, then my brother and I, who grew up with basically having ammunition put in our Christmas stockings when we were six or seven years old, because our parents raised us with gun safety from birth. If, if people are saying that guns cause the, the violence just because they have to be in our environment, it doesn't make sense because we should have gone on a shooting spree by now with all the guns we had around us. We had a whole room, walled them all, with handguns and everything. Sorry. And there's never been a single act of violence or any of this sort of thing, a shooting accident and all that. And here I go shooting all the time, and like I say, 1,500 NAMO last year, and never had a, a shooting accident. Then I went out and bought a dirt bike, and then ended up crashing and smashing my shoulder last year. You know, and it, it, where was the, there's a greater list, you know? You're listening to Hunt Talk, I'm Rip Love Doors, I'm your host Peter Wood, our guest today is Don Lindsay, and he's with the Canadian Firearm Paper, and we're down here at the Toronto Smoker Show, live. So Don, what can you suggest to new shooters? Um, get involved with your gun lobbies, get involved with the Canadian Shooting Sports Association, get involved with the National Firearms Association, there are some other groups out there, like the Canadian Firearms Institute. Um, get involved with these different groups and uh, support their initiatives in protecting their program rights. That's the biggest thing. The other thing is there is to basically try out some different types of guns that maybe not be uh, your usual ball of wax sort of thing, you know. If you've been into uh, using bolt action, you know, seven mils and hunting deer and all that, and then, you know, maybe just going out and blasting some clays or getting birds, you can still go out and do some shooting and crack off lots of ammo without having to go and completely bankrupt you because that's the beauty of some of these other calibers out there. For instance, the, uh, the CZ858 semi-automatic. Uh, looks very similar to an AK-47, it's the same ammo, but you know when you can go buy a crate of, of 1,300 rounds of ammunition for just over 300 bucks, I mean you can't go out and shoot your 270 all day long, shoot a buck and you would go, you got to start a And this way you can get out, you can get out have this fun, the guns ballistically is, is the same as 30 30 Winchester. So when you get out to have people, you know, sitting around playing their video games, practicing to shoot people in the head, and all these games that they give kids to be raised with this, they can get the thrill of blasting, but not having to shoot anything, you know, in violence. Well, and they can have a gun that's refined. Really I really think there's a lot of real fun stuff in my that uh, people should uh, look for. Just the aspect of getting people out and blast and have fun and, and, and do it in a safe environment. Because many of the gun enthusiasts I meet aren't hunters. And, and there's an awful lot of them are, are basically not into hunting. They want to come out and just have fun shooting. They I want to try the latest thing and they want to blast. I didn't start hunting until I was 26. But I shot handguns and rifles and shotguns when I turned 15. Yeah. So, and then I got into hunting, and I, you know, I, I'm more of a hunter now, but I still love yeah. blinking away with my little 17 or my, yeah. my shotgun of Bay Bird. So, I quite enjoy tiger shooting. Yeah. And it's a great way to spend an afternoon with the family. A great time. I bought a uh, uh, goat uh, doing some bird hunting last year. Didn't get a damn thing, <laughs> but we had a great time watering the forest. And I managed to fall into a water hole up to my armpits pretty well. <laughs> we had a great time. And uh, if people just got to get out and enjoy nature and get off the couch and have some fun, do it safe, do it responsible, but uh, still further the shooting sports and have fun. I love the message. How can people get a hold of you, Don? Go on to Facebook. It's a Facebook site only. So if you punch it into the regular internet, you're not going to find it. You got to punch in, go to your Facebook, or punch in Canadian Firearms Network. And that'll lead you right to it. And uh, honestly, anything is pro gun. Uh, I put up, uh, there's a Canadian Mounted Shooters Association, people who ride around horseback shooting balloons with uh, 45 Colt uh, replicas and stuff like that. 
Um, there's uh, Civil War reenactment groups out there. They're running out with brown vests and that sort of thing. There's so many different areas people can enjoy the firearm interests, whether they're reenactors or, uh, or, or whether they're hunters or target shooters. And there's also people selling so, you know, the rights of uh, home, just, uh, home defense, protecting your family and having those abilities. You want to thank you for coming on the show? I had a great time. Thanks, Ben. Oh, don't tell me.